before you're seated look at your neighbor and say neighbor today we're talking about the God who answers look at your neighbor on the other side and say he will answer he will answer you can be seated in the presence of the Lord please understand that if at any given point you hear something that sounds like your future do not be shackled to the perspective of the person sitting next to you some of us have to give bodily expression to the inspiration when Holy Spirit says something to our hearts. And so I want to just give you that uh, fair ground for you to move in freedom. Look at your neighbor and say, move in freedom. Our text gives us an interesting narrative that I think we need to consider for the next oh, 40 minutes or so. And this narrative is one where Elijah has found himself in some tension. And far be it from prophetic people to find themselves thrusted into tension. It's almost as if God will pluck a prophet out of his or her comfort and then assign them to the inconsistencies of people who say they're in relationship with him. And instead of them getting upset with their God, it's almost as if they turn to the representative an attempt to start a brawl with someone who is nothing more than an anointed parrot. Why would you want to fight the prophetic voice over saying what they only heard? It is the tension that Israel has found herself in. She, she seemingly has this cycle of being in love with God and then falling in love with something else. Her loyalties all throughout the scriptures have seemingly been so divided that God at times called a prophet named Hosea and said, go marry yourself to a harlot so that you can see what it's like to be in my kind of marital context. We find ourselves not just stuck in the biblical text, I'm not going to stretch it, but you can even build a bridge to 2022. And you can see how the consistencies of multiple opinions on social media, on CNN, or even in your group thread right now is contradictory to the yes Lord that you said on Sunday. It seems as if God's people are loyal to him as long as the blessing meets their definition. Pastor Benita I hadn't preached in a while, but one of the things that the Lord had been dealing with me about is that my people have defined my goodness based off of their own interpretation. We would assume that if God is good, then none of us should be wearing masks. Amen, I know. We would assume that if God is good, then there would be no injustice. But when you boil God down and box him into a type of goodness that can be pre-calculated by man, then you have just become the creator's equal. God isn't good just because there's no storms God is good like I'm black I can't be nothing else despite my tone of voice despite my articulation even my skin complexion no matter what your definition of an African American is I am what I am and I cannot change it it is not based off of the fruit of what you think should be in that category God is good because he can't be nothing else He's not good because the Christmas tree is full. And Elijah finds himself standing on God's behalf in the middle of a conflicted people and having to confront a demonic overlord. Ahab says, why have you even come this far? Elijah, have you come here to start trouble? And, and Elijah does not see his interaction as trouble but 
I'd like to submit to you on the contrary, he is trouble for something that has interrupted God's original intent for a people. Please hear me. Anytime you find yourself swerving off course, God will send you a confrontation that feels like trouble. What if I told you his love language is orchestrating disagreements with what you think is best? Evan, we assume that the favor of God is almost like rubbing the bottle of a genie and something supernatural come out and grant my wishes. The favor of God at times for you and I is scheduled trouble. What if God loves you enough in the stubbornness of your heart to schedule some trouble? Ahab wants to know, hey man, you coming to bring trouble or not? And Elijah is like, I don't really see it as trouble. I am a man drunk with obedience. And God's people have decided to fall away from the presence of the Lord. He, he tells them, uh, Ahab, do me a favor because they listen to you. Because the relational context right now is not that they would listen to the prophetic voice of Elijah. He said, you go tell them. Which tells me that sometimes relationships that feel good could be actually terrible for your soul. Here is the great tension that we mention, but I don't know if we create guardrails for. The tension is... Just because you make me feel good doesn't mean you are good for this version of who I am. I'm not excommunicating you forever, but for this version of my development, if I lend you my ear for too long, you may accidentally persuade me to do something that violates my vow to the Lord. So maybe... The breakup is not from hell. Maybe you are so connected to something that you can't hear God's warnings. And he has to schedule a divine disagreement. Many of you, I can sense by the tightness in the room, have been trying to find opportunities to reconvene and reconnect and trying to resurrect old relationships. And it seems like it's just not latching on. And it is quite possible that who you're after is going to heaven, but they cannot be a part of your right now. What if no one is absent? What if everything in the house is present for the kind of relationship that God has for you moving forward? We can't call him the God of multiplication and be mad when he prunes what brings fruit. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Oh, yeah. And, and apart from me, you can produce nothing. My father is the vine dresser, which means he reserves the right to examine what is yielding fruit. And even at its peak productivity, I'll pull a knife on it and cut it back. Because there is no next level without this level's pruning. So it brings us back to my original argument that we argue with God when he makes us endure his decisions that we don't agree with. He is not going to always agree with you. If we gather two or three, touching anything, we shall have what we say. Come here, let me help you. If you are asking for something in his name that is not a part of his will, he is not obligated to break rules for you. 
We are in a desperate season where it feels like inflation is all around us and it feels like the walls are caving in. And we're trying to build longevity for what we already have. But what if God says, if I let you continue in your direction, you'll accidentally worship Baal and not my new beginnings. So he sends this prophet. Look at your neighbor and say he sent a prophet. One more time, say he sent a prophet. He sends this prophet who is completely infused with God's plan for God's people. And he tells Ahab, you go tell him to come up here. We need to have a conversation. The Bible says that they, they all gathered. And uh, not only does he ask for the fickle Israelites, uh, but he's also asking that those prophets of Baal would join them. Please hear me. Because any relationship that can give you a future without Jesus is a false relationship. These false prophetic voices were dragging them away from Yahweh. Please hear me. All of us, in my humble opinion, specifically for the generation that I think God has assigned me to, I often argue with God. I say, you should have put me in the 90s. I'd have been great in the 90s. At this age, at 40, you know, put me in the 90s, man. This generation is consistently searching for relevance, clickbait, uh, uh, catchy phrases, something that, that makes the desires of potential customers salivate. Choosing my words carefully. And because that is a value system, God may cause your productivity to stagger so that you won't chase relevance more than the Redeemer. If you have spent more time, not necessarily in church, but if you've spent more time building your enterprise more than you have been seeking the face of the Lord, then you, my friend, are probably scheduled for a divine disagreement. And although we shun and run from those moments, it is the love of God that he would not let you continue in your fallacy making you think it was favor. Meet me at the top of this mountain. 450 prophets of Baal. He said, I want all of the relational influences and influencers that are dragging God's people away from him. Bring them to the top. He says, not only are we going to have this confrontation at the top, but I'm going to make sure that there is a line drawn in the sand. Please hear the prophetic words of Elijah. Elijah says it like this. How long? Are you going to waver in between opinions? How long are you going to be on God's side this day and then on hell's side that day? How long? And let me back that thing up juvenile style real quick. Because sometimes we assume that being on hell's side is like Disney witchcraft. You know, like oil and boiling around a big black pot. Now, I'm talking about the kind of carnality that doles the gifts of the spirit. How long will we be committed? to gossip and how long will we be committed to the things of sorcery and rebellion how long will we be consistently connected to unforgiveness you say pastor I'm not in witchcraft yeah but you won't forgive the person on the other side of the room you intentionally sit over there and leave early to make sure that you don't have to interact and God has said you can be as anointed as you want apologize I can't get no help now. What if the greatest gift on your life was an apostolic apology? What if it was a prophetic apology? What if it was an evangelistic apology? What if the greatest healing you can provide is I'm sorry? Sorry. We are in a relational crisis. There is no way you can treat me right if you do not see God right. 
It's not going to be possible for you to love me right if you don't love God right. And we are living in the era of the remix where we will love God according to our schedules and we will love God according to our preference and we will love God according to the things that we think we can and cannot live without. We are remixing principles and we are redefining the pillars of the word of God in order to squeeze in the stuff we won't crucify. And Elijah says, meet me at the top of the mountain. Don't just come alone. Bring with me every voice that convinces you that space between you and God is best. Bring me these, these prophets, these prophets of Baal. And Elijah makes his claim, how long? You're going to waver in between these two opinions. If God be God, serve him. I'm going to try it over here. If, if God is God, then serve him. I'm going to talk to the online audience. If God is God, then serve him. This opportunity will not exempt you from temptation to serve something else. But when you allow your soul to become so anchored in the ways of the Lord, other temptations lose its glitz and glamour. Here's what he says. Um, Elijah said to them, I'm only one prophet of the Lord. Baal has 450. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to bring two bulls. What he's getting ready to set up is an altercation. And this altercation is specifically set up so that God can respond. We are about to see the response of God. Many of us have been living sacrificially not according to the law and works, but by faith. And we have been living in a way that at some point, God is going to have to respond or his enemies may have an occasion to blaspheme that he left the righteous out to dry. But David said it like this, I was once young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread all i'm telling you is he is the god that responds elbow your neighbor and say he will respond he will respond what do you have on the altar he will respond he will open up the heavens and send down answer that sends us into the future take 10 seconds and give him praise because he will respond Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. He will. Here's what he says. Let's go get that bull. Hallelujah. Go get that bull. Here's what I want you to do. Cut it up into pieces. Lay those pieces on the wood and the altar. I don't have time to talk about the altar, but if the altar would have been built out of place, and God could not have favorably responded to convict and rescue his people. It matters how you build your altar. Your relationship with your altar matters. Don't believe the hype. I know that there is a philosophy that says do what you want, how you want. You can come as you are. But when you come into contact with the real gospel of grace, you don't stay as you are. I'm free to do whatever, but because I'm so in love, I don't do. Amen. That relationship, if that wood would have been misplaced, if, if those stones would have been out of place, God would have been thrusted into a conflict where I could not favorably respond with fire. Build your altar the right way. 
Don't build it according to fad and don't build it according to pressure. Don't build it according to the clamor of likes and posts and comments. You build that thing how God told you to build it and then you be okay with whatever audience he brings to see you burn. Yeah. Don't you dare ever again become jealous and idolatrous over somebody else's online productivity. I built this altar like he put it in my belly and whoever shows up to the bonfire is who I'm supposed to effect. Build your altar. They build that altar. Put these bulls on that. Build that altar. Put those bulls, the pieces of the bulls there. Call on the name of your God and I'll call on mine. And the God that answers by fire. We will crown him God. Elijah says to the prophets of Baal, you go first. And they grab those bulls and they grab everything they've got. And they start doing their ritualistic opportunity to begin to get, this is interesting, Baal to respond. They weren't praying to Yahweh. Elijah is clear. We'll see whose God is God. I imagine that there was some form of communication with Baal to those prophets. It was demonic, but still some form of communication. Here is what I love about a godly confrontation for those he's in relationship with. He will shut down all demonic chatter Whee! so that there can be no confusion. Who is the God that responds? Lift your hands. Let me prophesy to you. Over the next 30 days, may every demonic imp and chatter be silent. Yeah, be silenced in your head. Every imp, every trick. Every soul time, every hex, may it be silenced in your life that you might hear clearly the directions of God. If you believe that, throw your head back and scream. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. Woo! Look at somebody and say, silence. Silence. That's the name of my season. Silence. Everything in my life. Silence. Silence on the accusations. Silence on the scandal. Silence on the fear. Silence on social media. Everything that don't sound like God. Silence. Silence it. Yeah. Silence the sickness. Silence the poverty. These contrary voices must come. Be seated. Call on the name of your God. Just don't set fire to the wood. Because we'll know whose God is responding based on the fire. Elijah said, y'all come here. Y'all come here. He said, go get me four jugs of water, four jugs of water, and before it's my turn to call on the God that will respond by fire, I want to ask you to trust me relationally, because I'm about to ask you to do something that is contrary to science. What I want you to do is I want you to go get some water, and I want you to pour so much on the wood that it would so saturate this wood that it would be naturally impossible for this thing to catch on fire. We serve the kind of God that asks us to make things worse. Woo! He'll ask us to seemingly make things worse before it gets better. This prophetic instruction is to go and make it worse. Don't make it worse. Pay attention. They get one pot, they get two pots, they get three pots, and then the Bible after the third pot tells us that it's drenched, the water is running around the altar and is now filling the trench. And at the usual time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed. He prayed. And then immediately, verse 38, here comes the fire. I'm going to back it up. 
Here's what you got to catch. Uh, he said, go get four pots. Four pots. They only use three. Do me a favor. Work with me. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what quarter of the year are we in? Something supernatural happens before the fourth quarter. Before the fourth pot, fire falls. Hear me. If you have felt like the first three quarters of the year, things have gotten progressively worse. The world has gotten progressively wetter. And it feels like God's about to take an L. Rejoice. The fire of God is about to respond. I feel like praying now. Lift your hands. I declare right now in all nations Atlanta that she had assumed that things were getting progressively worse. Oh, but by the time the fourth jar gets here, let your fire come down. Let there be a distinction of your presence that sets us free. I need a couple of intercessors. Come on, worship him. Come on. I need some prophets to declare. Jump in the flow of the river. God sent me here this morning to remind his church, I will come with an answer. I, yes, will come with my answers. I will not leave you in conflict relationally. I will come with answers. Answers on Monday. Answers on Tuesday. Answers for December. Answers for 2023. Fear not all nations. You are in the valley of decision. Trying to decide how the outcome will get here. I got a word for you. God will. God will. He will answer. He will answer. He will answer. He will answer. Shut up, devil. I'm not talking to you. He will answer. He will answer. He will answer. He will answer. Something is turning in my direction. Should I sign the contract? Hold on. God will answer. He will. He will. He will. He will. The wood is wet. And it looks like he won't answer. God will. He will. Hold it, man. Lift your voice and worship him. Come on. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. You're coming out of indecision. Worship him. <laughs> Woo! Here he comes. You're coming out of indecision. Worship him. God's about to come and get you. Here comes the smelling salt. Worship him. I can see the fire coming. Worship him. This church was built on worship. I was there when you were born. This, oh, this place was built on worship. Worship him. Come on. That's how you get your strength back. That's how you get your clarity back. How long? How long will you assume he won't answer? How long will you assume that he doesn't see? He will. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Yes. He will answer. Tears in my eyes, pain in my body, he will answer, he will, he will, hey, 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 he will, I know we might be a little out of order, but if you need to get to this altar, hurry up, get down here, there's answers at the altar, Yato. he will, he will, hurry up, you've been cute all day. If you need God to send some answers, stop playing hard to get the glory, the glory of God. You're watching online. Bow at your coffee table. God's about to send some answers. Before September gets here, here come the answers. Yes. 
says in the rest of the text that they fell down and worship when the fire fell <laughs> their seek got restored their presence came back on them something supernatural here's what happened as they were worshiping Elijah said go get me those prophets that tempted you to leave God. Arrest them. Put them to death. Hear me? Death in the Bible also speaks to the separation of relationship. He said, cut ties. He says, from this day forward, those voices that drug you away from God will never speak to you again. Some of you are going to have to ready your heart that there'll be some voices you never hear from again. Oh. That is not the place for panic. That is the place to receive the coming season of God's life in your heart. Many of you have been taking your counsel from insecurity. That voice is coming down. Woo! Many of you have been taking your counsel from poverty. That voice is coming down. Many of you have been taking your prophetic words from the spirit of fear. 
been calling it wisdom and it wasn't. It's coming down. God gave you a pastor proficient in wisdom so that you would never again assume that fear was your wisdom guide. When Dr. Hart stands in this pulpit, believe it or not, it's warfare. He is pulling down ideologies out of your mind and reestablishing pillars of sanctification. A lifelong process for your becoming of a new creature. Lift your hands if you can. All of us are not Elijah. All of us are not standing on Mount Carmel demanding that people choose God or not. Some of us are Israel who had become conflicted relationally. Here's the good news. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk according to the spirit and not the flesh. You are not a lost cause just because you might be lost currently. Now right now, I don't have a special abracadabra prayer for you. What we do have is the presence of the Lord and if you know that you have drifted, you don't have to move. It's setting in your heart right now. My words are bearing witness with your drifting. And the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is dragging you back to the safety of God's pavilion. You will see that in the coming hours and even in the next few days, God's about to readjust your relational circle. Until your ears become strong enough, God is going to send you the right voices and silence the tempting ones. As your ears grow in strength and your heart develops more resolve, then many of you will walk into in the coming months an open door for you to experience the promises that God has shown you. If you sense that promises are delayed that God has shown you, do not curse him. It is possible that he has paused what you aren't ready for yet. Because a good father won't give you a car without a driver's license. Getting behind that wheel might cost you your life and whoever has to come into contact with you. Father, I lift your sons and daughters to you. I thank you for this prophetic altercation this morning. And I am asking that the fire would be like a beacon of hope that we can track towards. I am praying, Father, that from this day forward, we would be so convinced of your goodness that nothing would stop us from pursuing you. I'm praying right now, my God, for your people, that they would come into the kind of confidence that they would not abandon ship prematurely. For I sense, ha, 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 I sense in this room that many of you had decided that you could quietly disappear and nobody would notice. This is your announcement today to buckle into the place where God has planted you. Father, heal the wounds. Refocus the distracted. Bless the faithful. Send us into the future. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, clap those hands and give Jesus a great praise, everybody. Come on, you can do much better than that. Clap those hands, everybody. Be seated. If you're still at this altar, you're still working some things out with God, you stay right where you are. Spend time with the Father. We covered some ground today. 
We talked about the tension of playing both sides of the fence. We talked about God sending us prophetic altercations that can get us back on track with him. We talked about God silencing every negative voice in us and convinces us that God doesn't care. And what I love is we can rejoice that even though those three jars of water made that wood wet, before the fourth jar came, the fire of God descended. And we saw that there were hearts and lives changed. Not only that, Elijah said, seize those negative voices that are drawing God's people away. And I just want to declare over you, if there be any addiction, if there be any, any soul tie, if there be any fear that is acting as a voice in your heart, I'm asking God that before midnight strikes, you would have the best night's sleep you've had in 45 days. That's what I'm believing for you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get my rest back. Listen. It's, in, it's important that you find the consistent voice of God. Hear me. Never again allow the environmental circumstances to make your heart drift from God. 